So welcome to 3.4 of this lesson of the grab and release and now it's our turn and what they want us to do here is to create a program that's going to grab the cuboid, drive forward and then release it and then our robot needs to return back to the starting position. And they want us to use the program that they've already provided us. So there are again many ways to do this. I'm just going to show you one way in case you're stuck and you need help. Sometimes it's nice to have a visual, but then I really want you to try to see if you can come up with your own way or apply what I've learned and maybe tweak it a little bit to make it your own. So I'm going to focus on this right button press code for this particular challenge. And so I know that what I need to do first, if I look at this, and remember I always suggest on paper writing down some pseudocode, what are the steps, and then going in and making that code happen. So the first thing we need to do, we need to grab the cuboid. And we know that we had this up here uh, with this program when we pressed the left button press. So we had our claw our extension go down and grab the block. So what I'm going to do, I'm literally just going to take this block right here because that's the one that I know that we need. We already have the set A speed to 30%. I'm just going to bring that down. You could have duplicated it too. Um, you know, whatever works best for you. And what I have here is we're going to run counterclockwise for 100 degrees. This is going to bring the extension arm down to the cuboid that's going to be in front. And then I'm going to do two, and I'm going to change this here to rotations. I think in the demo we had seconds. And the reason I'm doing rotations, if you remember back from a previous lesson, we learned about how to figure out how many inches one rotation are wheels that come with the standard kit provide. We know that it's roughly about 6.9 inches. Obviously, give or take a little bit there depending on the friction and the type of flooring that you're using. For me that I know um, based on just the flooring that I've used for lots of these projects, I know where that is. So you'll see here in a minute that I've actually taped off those spots um, to allow for consistent starting and finishing points. So I'm going to go forward for two rotations. And then what I'm going to do here then is I don't want to do counterclockwise again. I actually want to raise the arm. So I'm going to make this a clockwise. I'm going to switch it so the arm lifts. I'm going to leave the cuboid there just like it's telling us to do. And then we need to go back, in this case, to the starting point. So I'm just going to bring in a move forward block again. But this time we're going to not move forward. We're going to go backwards and we're going to do that for two rotations and this should give us what we want so let's go ahead and see the robot in action and see if we can actually do what the challenge is grab the cuboid go forward release the cuboid go back to our starting position so let's go ahead and switch to cameras and see what we come up with here okay so you can see here that i've just used my yardstick from our previous lessons i have it measured out i know that it's roughly you know, 13.8 inches for two rotations. I have it marked at just a little over 13 and a half. And I'm just using that as based on the calibrations of this flooring, same type of thing you can always do. I've got the cuboid pressed for right in front of my robot. Ideally what this is gonna do, it's gonna drop the extension claw or brick. It's gonna move forward. It's going to drop the cuboid off right here. It's gonna wait one second and it's going to go back to its starting base. So let's go ahead and see how this works. And there you have it. It went down, captured the, the cuboid, pushed forward, released it by lifting up, and then going back to its original state. There you go, my friends. As always, stay awesome. Peace.